Welcome to Solid Rock, where we share truth, live grace, and grow together. Let's see what's going on around the rock. If this is your first time with us, we want to say welcome and invite you to fill out a guest connection card in the seat in front of you or online. There are many ways you can give to Solid Rock, through text to give our church app, on our website, or by dropping your offering in the receptacles as you exit. Are you ready to get plugged in at The Rock? Then sign up for our Next Steps class Sunday, November 8th at 11 a.m. in Youth Rock. You can sign up on guest information or on the church app. To keep up with everything going on around Solid Rock, you can follow us on social media, download our app on iTunes or Google Play, or go to our website at solidrockjc.com.
Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our online service here at Solid Rock. I'm Pastor Joe Skiles, and I am so glad that you have joined us this evening. And uh, I'm excited for uh, what the Lord is doing in His wonderful presence and how He is moving in such a special way. God is blessing our services here, and um, we are just, uh, uh, we're just excited about where He's going to take us even through all of these things. The scripture says in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good to them who love God, who are they called according to his purpose. So uh, we're going to trust him and uh, do what we always do. And that is put our confidence in his word and his presence because he has got us. And I'm so excited to be able to share with you this evening and glad that you have joined me here. Um, I want to, I want to, uh, uh speak to you this evening and share with you um, from Philippians chapter 1 and uh, verses uh, 25, 25 through 30. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And I want to get right into this because I want to talk about uh, that we are citizens, not of this world, but of another world, even though that we are here. Okay, so so wrap your mind around that. Uh, if you're a new Christian, and maybe you don't know a lot about the Word of God. Uh, the Scripture tells us this: uh, Philippians chapter one, uh, verse twenty-five, and this is the writing of the Apostle Paul. He says, "And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and your joy of faith." that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Only let your conduct or your responsibility be worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel." And not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them proof of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that is from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here is in me." Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your Holy Spirit, the presence of your power. Open our hearts and our minds that we may receive your word, that God, it may help us to grow. You said that faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word. So increase our faith today as we learn together. And God, as we look into your holy scriptures, I pray, Father, that you touch everyone that's watching today. God, whatever they need in their hearts and their lives, that God, you would just let this word find its mark and touch them. I praise you for your presence, for everything that you're doing, your blessings upon us. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen and amen. I, I love this scripture setting because Paul is saying in, in the 25th verse that I just read to you that he has confidence. And the confidence that uh, he is talking about was that he was going to live and not die. Because if you read like the, uh, the, the 21st verse, it talks about uh, he's saying that uh, it would be gain for him if, you know, if he died because he would be in the presence of the Lord. But he's talking to the Philippians here, and it's important that he is to uh, stay with them. And, uh, and that he is to uh, visit them again. Now he's, he's, writing from, he's writing from the jail and he wrote many of his letters from, uh, from jail. But, uh, but his confidence is that he is going to be with them. And, and so he's telling them that it's very important in these scriptures that they come together talking about our fellowship, that we become one, that, um, that, you know, we encourage and lift up one another. And so the Lord assured him that, that uh, while even he was in prison, that it was important that he stayed there, that he could minister um, unto the Philippians and also for his portion of the word of God that he was writing at that time that I'm sharing with you today, the, uh, the gospel and, and the word that the word of God needed to be 
completed. And, and so the Philippian saints also needed him there for a while. And, and, and I love this uh, for the simple reason for, for the fellowship and the strength, but for the furtherance and the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ because he was, he was teaching them. And I can tell you that out of all of the congregations that, uh, that Paul uh, you know, had had met with and had established, had had ministered to, the the Philippians probably were the most advanced and and the most mature out of all of the others. But God still had a thing that He wanted to teach them, and He wanted them to receive the instructions that was going to be given to them through Paul, and uh, He wanted this to happen in that particular church. And He was telling them that by Paul's coming, that they were going to advance further and become stronger and, and more mature in, in uh, his word and in his presence. And, and so now they could have advanced without Paul. That's, I mean, that's absolutely um, understandable. They could have advanced without Paul, but God was going to use him to see to it that they did advance. Now, now we don't need specific people. Um, we don't need specific individuals to advance, but we do need people. I need you. You need me. And, uh, you know, and God has given us people. He's given us pastors and teachers and, and uh, you know, and evangelists and apostles and prophets. And he's, he's given us one another. He's given us, uh, you know, uh, as we come together in the body of Christ so that we can encourage one another. But he's telling them, Paul is telling them, uh, you know, and gives them instructions that later without him, God still wants them to advance whether he's there or not. And I want you to get that, that we are not dependent on one particular individual. Your, your walk with God, your relationship with Christ is not dependent upon me, whether I'm here or whether I'm not. And this is what Paul is saying. And, um, and I'm telling you, if I was to check out today your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ as established by your faith and what you have in your heart. And I promise you, if something happens to me, Solid Rock is going to continue on. I hope that I have trained and taught and, um, and ministered and, and brought this into the hearts and the minds of people. That it's not about just specific individuals. It was God's desire that Paul would go to the Philippian church that he could encourage them and help them. But he was also telling him, even though that he was in prison, nothing can stop the gospel. Man, what a thought. Nothing can stop the gospel. And he found that out. I mean, not prison walls, not prison bars, not chains. None of these things can stop the gospel. Even when they chained, uh, you know, Roman soldiers to him, he would win those Roman soldiers and those soldiers would go home and they would win their families. And there was a continual uh, gospel being preached and lives were being transformed and changed. And, and the faith that we have as we look at this, and this is the gospel rendering, the faith that we have is is, is the word of God that God gives to us because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we never get to the point. Look at me right here. We never get to the point that we don't need to advance in the Word of God. Nobody knows it all. Nobody understands it all. We have to continue, and God gives us revelation, and He opens up our eyes that we may understand. And the more advanced that you get in the things of God, joy just kind of tags along. Now, now did you notice in our scripture uh, that it talked about uh, the, the joy of God? And joy tags along as you get closer to God and as you uh, uh, serve him and seek him and seek his word then the joy of God accompanies that and instead of seeking uh, you know just seeking the joy seek God and everything else will fall into place you know I, I uh, an illustration I, I think about trees trees don't strain to produce fruit they just produce fruit and as long as the tree is nourished it's going to produce and as long as Christians are nourished by God and God's word and his presence, 
we are going to produce. And that's what we should do. That's why that we need His Word and we need the Holy Spirit and His presence abiding in us. If we are nourished by that, then we are going to make a, a difference in what is around us today. And, and the fruit in our lives should continue to grow. Uh, I, I could ask you a question, how many of you are more mature and have more peace this year than you did last year, even through the COVID, even through the pandemic? How many of you have more joy, more peace, because you have put your trust and your confidence in God? And this is the way that it should be. You can have joy. And let me tell you something. You can have joy when you don't even have a smile on your face, because we know that there are going to be times that we're going to go through things that are sorrowful. Maybe the loss of a loved one, or, 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 or maybe the loss of a job, or, or situations in a relationship, or circumstances that are happening around us like the chaos that is that is in this world that sometimes seems un, unbearable. Let me tell you something. You can still have the joy of the Lord. God's joy can still be in your heart. And your stability and joy comes through the advancement of your faith because you have faith in God and you have confidence in what He has done. And, and you know, as you, as you think about this, the Apostle Paul was in the Philippian jail and and as he was in the Philippian jail there with Silas, you know the story. Their backs, if um, you know, if, if you're a Bible reader, uh, their backs had been beaten and laid open with a whip, and their their feet and their hands were in chains, and and uh, and it could have been a real downer, a real bummer for them at that time. But instead of complaining about their situation, they sang praises unto God uh, in, in the midnight hour because that's what was in their heart. And, and they began to, uh, you know, rejoice. And the joy on the inside of them took over. And when the joy on the inside of them took over, then God took over. And that's when he, he sent the earthquake and the prison doors opened up and, and they were free. And they were able to get the jailer free. And, and I mean, get the jailer saved and, and his entire family and baptized them. I, I'm telling you, what a wonderful story that it is. But this is what God does. And it's all because of the joy. Circumstances may not be good around us, but the joy of the Lord is our strength, and it always abides in us. That's why we have to get our eyes off what we're seeing today and what, what we are experiencing today, because after all of this is done, after the voting next Tuesday, I'm just telling you right now, God will still be on His throne, and the gospel will still be preached. Man, I'm about to get excited right here. That's what the joy of the Lord does for us and in us. Now in verse 26 of the text that we read, Paul begins to point out that, that we are citizens of, of heaven, um, you know, that are just here in this earth. Uh, we are in this world, the Bible says, but we are not of this world. And that doesn't mean that this earth is always going to just just open up its arms to us because we, we see what's happening today and we see the attacks and the adversary coming against those of faith, those who have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But we are citizens of heaven and we are ambassadors of heaven and we are representatives of heaven because of our relationship. And Paul is pointing this out uh, to the Philippians that, that they are not, uh, you know, always going to be welcome here. Just like they rejected Jesus. Jesus said, they rejected me. They hated me and they're going to hate you. And it's because of our walk with God and because of our relationship with him. And because Satan is the God of this world, the scripture says. And his philosophies, they don't go along with the philosophies of God and what is God's word today. That's why, you know, the maneuvering and all the political jockey and everything that has taken place and people vying for the power because they want to change things to their philosophy and the philosophy of this world is not a good philosophy but the philosophy of God is and that's why we have to trust him this world is not going to fall down and say oh you are great you know we welcome you we've seen this we've experienced all of these other things but verse 26 tells us that God's desire is that that the joy we have 
on the inside be overflowing that men may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. So um, as, as we look at, at, at verse number 27, uh, it, talks about our, it talks about our conversation and it talks about our responsibility as a citizen and uh, how it weighs heavily on the direction of the gospel of, of Jesus Christ and how that we are to understand that because it says our conduct should be worthy. Our, our conversations, our responsibility should be worthy of these things as it becomes the gospel of Jesus Christ because we are representatives. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20, we are ambassadors for Christ. That's who we are. We represent him. And Jesus was an ambassador when he came from heaven down here to earth this earth was not his home. Uh, heaven uh, was his home, but he came here and he came from another place. And he came into this earth to tell us about that place and to give us an opportunity to go to that place. And he told us how to gain entrance into that place by the new birth. That was the conversation he had with Nicodemus uh, in John 3 and how that um, Nicodemus came and said, we know that you are a great teacher. Jesus answered the question that was on his heart, not the one that came out of his mouth. And he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. You know, you must be born again. That's when he talks about, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the physical birth. And Jesus said, no, this is a spiritual issue. And I talked a little bit about it Sunday morning in our, um, in, in our last installment of the COVID Chronicles. And, and uh, man, Julie's testimony was just so awesome. And, and it helped and blessed so many different people. And, but but I, I, I talked about how that our spirits are saved. Our bodies are not saved because they're not going to be redeemed till Jesus comes, but our spirits are safe. And, and, and this is what happens uh, unto us. And, and Jesus is an ambassador. Uh, ambassadors are never taken as, as, as lowly people. And then he tells us, Paul tells us that we are ambassadors for Christ, that we are representing him. He came representing God. And then he said, I'm going away, but you are going to represent me uh, here in this here in this earth, and and so ambassadors are never taken as lowly people. First Peter chapter two and verse nine says that we are a a royal priesthood that uh, uh, that we are a chosen generation. It begins to share all of these things, and we want the best to represent us as our ambassadors here in America as they go to different places, and God wants the very best here in this earth as his representation in, uh, in those that, uh, that are representing him. And, and so God sends his best into this planet. That was Jesus Christ. And then we, his children, are representing him to everyone who is around us. And ambassadors are not citizens of the country uh, they are in. They are, they are citizens of the country they have come from. Like we send ambassadors to, to, to Japan, then uh, they are still uh, as citizens here in America, but they are ambassadors representing America there in Japan. And that's what we do. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And, and Satan had such little control over us. Man, this ought to make you shout right here. He had such little control over us that we changed citizenship right in front of him and he couldn't do a thing about it. He couldn't stop it because we become Christians. We become children of God. We become part of the body of Christ and the family of God. And when we received that, uh, we became citizens of heaven. Our names were written down in heaven, even though that we are here. There's an old song that says, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. And that's all we're doing. We're passing through this world because our citizenship is now in heaven and we are representatives of heaven. And that means that Satan's laws and everything, his philosophies and what he does no longer, apply, no longer applies to us because we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven and we become aliens here to this planet. That it doesn't mean that we don't operate and we don't function in this planet because we, we do. We are no longer citizens here. We are here, but no longer from here, just visiting for a while because our home is in heaven and that's where we're going to abide. And, and the only way that Satan can put his laws on us 
The only way that he can apply all of his philosophies and his will upon us is to deceive us into thinking that we are still citizens of this world. Praise God. There's been a transformation. There's been a change. Our names have been written down in heaven and we have become citizens of heaven. And the more you find out who you are, the more you discover what God has done, the more you find out what God has made available to you. We, we find it in his word. We discover who we are and we begin to walk in the freedom that God has given to us. And Satan can't put things on you He's going to try to oppose you, but you have the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ to kick him to the curb and say, you are not going to come into my home and you're not going to do these things to my family and in my life. Yes, he's going to oppose us and we can plan on the opposition. He comes to steal, kill and destroy. But whenever you become born again, whenever you become born again, we realize who we are. And, and you know, because we used to follow his, his plan and, uh, and he, he used to control us. But now you're flowing against his plan. And I can tell you, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like it at all. And, and the world can, can, can go under. But we have to realize we're, we're citizens of heaven. I mean, our, our, our faith and our confidence is in heaven. And that's, who we, and, and that's what uh, we are rejoicing about. And the joy that the Philippians were growing in was the fact that they had become citizens of, of heaven. And, uh, you know, and, and God says, you haven't, you haven't been in heaven yet. You, you're, you're not here yet. We, none of us have, have, have been there yet. But we are to act like we are already there. How? How about that, huh? We are to act like we are already there. I, I mean, we, we get that into our spirit and into our hearts. And God says, I'm going to meet your needs like you are, you are already here. And he's saying in verse number 27, you, you should act like a citizen of, of, of heaven. And uh, act like, you know, that, that, um, that I'm, I'm God and I'm the Lord over your life. It's not something you try to be. It's not something you work at trying to be. You already are because you are a child of God and you have received Christ as your personal Savior. I don't have to act like a Skiles. <laughs> I am a Skiles. I mean, that's who I am by birth and, and um, you know, and, and what has transpired. I am a Skiles. I am Joe Skiles along with my siblings and, and, and my other family members. And when we witness, uh, you know, as we witness here upon this planet, Jesus is, is witnessing. That's why we are ambassadors for Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. Again, Jesus had to leave this planet and go back to heaven. You know that story. Ascending back to the right hand of the Father. But on the day of Pentecost, um, there were 120 Jesuses that came out of that upper room. Now think about this. You know, he, he ascended up into heaven. The angels in white said, why are you standing here? He He's going to come back in the same manner. And they went into Jerusalem and they waited his instructions that he gave them for power from on high, the Holy Spirit to be poured out. And that happened on the day of Pentecost. And then there were 120 Jesuses. And in that very same day, um, there were 3,120 Jesuses because um, 3,000 people were added to the church that day through the message of, of Peter. And in a few days, there was 8,120 Jesuses. And by a few more chapters, I mean, there were so many that they couldn't keep track of them because the Lord was adding to the church daily. There were entire villages and, 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 and towns and cities that were, that were coming to Christ. And at one place it talks about that the multitudes received Christ. And so, so many people were being born again because all of these Jesuses were going out. And that's what we do every day. Every day when we get up, we are representing heaven. We are Jesus going out into all of the world and 
sharing the good news and the blessings that God has bestowed upon us. And, and when somebody is born again, when somebody is saved, they become that representative of Jesus Christ in this earth. And we have the same message that he did. That's why John, 1 John 4 and 17 says, As he is, so are we in the world. As he is. That's who we are to represent. And uh, we've been given the right to walk uh, you know, in this earth as Jesus did. We have been given that right. And as you think about that, as being citizens, citizens of heaven, was Jesus victorious over sin in this earth? Yes. Was Jesus ever sick in this earth? No. Did, did he have what he needed to, to uh, just function each and every day? Yes. Was he persecuted? Yes, he was persecuted. And, uh, but Jesus didn't accept these things because he was not part of, of this citizenship of heaven. And neither are we. I know things come to us. I know that we, we look at this COVID-19. Take authority over that. Yes, yes, it, it's, it's real. It's a real virus, just like cancer is real. And sugar diabetes is real and heart problems are real. And kidney problems are real. We, we, we understand this. But, but when it comes to us, we are citizens of heaven. We don't have to accept that. We can in the name of Jesus because by his stripes we were healed. Take authority and say, Father, I'm going to walk in my healing and I'm going to praise you for what you're going to do in my body and accept that and believe that. And that goes for every situation and every circumstance that we deal with in this life. I used to be a part of this world. I mean, I was a part of this world, but I changed citizenships whenever Jesus became the Lord, uh, you know, of my life. And uh, in your life, Life, are the scales tipped toward uh, the Lord Jesus Christ or not? In your life, are, are they tipped towards Him? Are you always tipping towards the natural and, and, and all of the, the emotions and the feelings and, and, and everything that is there? Or are you tipped towards the Word of God and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit? I mean, we all have spiritual life. And we all have a natural life. I, 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 I get that, a natural life. And I'm not telling you you have to spend every day in church and come here and be here 24-7. I'm not telling you that you have to go to every prayer meeting and every revival and every uh, awakening and, uh, and, and every spiritual thing that's going on all around us every night. I, I'm not telling you that you have to live your life like that. If you, if you did, I, I would think there was something probably a little warped about you because we do have a natural life. Somebody told me one time, said, you know, you know, I, I don't do anything at home that I don't do at church. That's a lie. I'm just telling you that's a lie. Somebody told me that one time. When I go home, I take my pants off and go to bed. I'm not going to do that here in, in front of this congregation. And, and so we can't really, uh, you know, uh, justify that. But the point I'm trying to make is you have a natural life. You have a spiritual life. Be bent toward that spiritual life because that's what gives us victory. And that's what helps us to walk in the power and in the presence of Almighty God. And that's certainly what we have to do. You have to have a natural life. It's a natural life. You have to eat, you have to drink, you have to live your life, you have to go to work, and um, you have to have that balance. But, but make sure your life is tipped in the direction of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and because if it's tipped uh, in the natural direction, then, then uh, you know, uh, I, I'm afraid sometimes people have to look at us twice or maybe three times to discover that we are, we are Christians and it shouldn't be that way. They ought to recognize that immediately. They ought to see that in us. No one should have to think about whether we are Christians or not because we have a relationship with Him. Um, it's in our everyday life. It's in our everyday life. Uh, if I I'm out golfing. If I'm out golfing, I, I want people to see me as a Christian and not as a golfer. Well, I, I promise you they're not going to see me as a golfer anyway, even if I am golfing. But uh, the important thing is I want them to see me as a child of God, as someone who has a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and uh, that's more important than anything else. And, and, and now that, uh, you know, we, I mean, we can, we can enjoy ourselves. We can, we, we can have fun and, and we can do all of the things that, that bring joy. But your 
your life is always tipped in the direction of being a representative and ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the message that Paul was given to the Philippians. And, and Paul is saying, uh, you know, uh, are you an ambassador? Yes, yes. Then let your light so shine that uh, that would represent that and that people would see that you have a relationship with him. He said, whether I'm there or not, and this is very important that we understand whether I'm there or not. He said, don't put on your best because I'm coming to town, you know, because I'm going to be there. Put, put on your best because Jesus is already there and because he is in control. And he said that, that, that I may hear of your responsibility or your conduct or your conversation as a citizen of heaven and having a relationship with God. And Paul said, stand for fast in one spirit as a congregation, as a people. Solid rock. Listen to me, there's, there's never been more, uh, a, a time that's more important than right now that we stand together in the unity of the faith and, and the spirit that we have as a congregation. You know, I, I mean, when we ask ourselves, why do we come to church? Because it's tough out there in the world. Man, just Sunday morning, and I know, I know, you know, if you, you say, well, I'm afraid to come. Wear your mask. Wear gloves. I, I mean, you know, if, if you want to build yourself a little plastic cubicle and sit inside of it, we don't care. But there's just something about being with the children of God. And we pray for protection. And, and we do everything that, that, that we need to do to make sure that, that our facilities are safe and sanitized. I, I want to I, I, I ensure you of that but um, but come because we need one another and you need this you need God's presence and you need the Holy Spirit and and you need the interaction you know stand uh, you know the right distance away and, and talk to people that's okay no nobody's gonna nobody's gonna put you down for that we're, we're not into that we just need you to to come so that you can feel the presence and and power of God and your inward man your inward man will will die without this type of relationship. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you coming online. I appreciate you being here this evening. And, and we're not having uh, Wednesday night services and we're working toward our plan for that, which uh, will probably be at the first of the year. But but uh, we are we are working on something that's going to uh, work for us here for a Wednesday night. But, um, you know, uh, I, I appreciate you watching on Sunday if you can't come. But don't let fear drive you. Let the Holy Spirit help you and uh, and we're going to pray that God would encourage you we we need I think we need church more today than we ever have we need it today in uh, in what we're going through so stand fast in one spirit hold your ground in the unity of the spirit have that have that vision you know I mean have 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 that vision to to understand you know, who we are, that we're going to share truth, live grace and grow together. And that our mission is we want people to know God. We want them to find freedom in their life. You, you can't deal with your today unless you have dealt with your yesterday. And so, so, so you have to, you have to find that freedom and then discover your purpose what you're going to do. God has a plan for your life and it's a good plan. And then we'll make a difference like Paul is talking about the Philippians doing, making a difference and, and you know, and ministering to the hearts and the lives of people. So stand fast in that spirit and let the community see us who we are and walking in the ways of God and, and let our outward life be uh, in, in Jesus Christ. And don't be afraid of your adversaries. Don't be afraid of what is coming against you because they're going to be, uh, they're going to oppose us. But don't be terrified because greater is he that's in us than he that is in this world. And we have to rejoice in that. There'll be challenges. They're going to be there. And uh, we know that, that God is going to help us as, as we walk through this, as, as we don't look at uh, uh, all of the things that are coming against us, but keep our eyes planted on him. And while everybody else is falling apart, he's going to hold us together and he's going to hold things together. And um, people don't like our joy. They don't like our stability. They don't like our peace. 
peace. They, they want to go crazy with the fear and everything that's taken place. But uh, my heart and my mind has stayed upon him. And he's going to keep us and he is going to touch us. Yes, they'll persecute us. Matthew chapter 5 tells us that, that we're going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. Um, you know, verse number, uh, verse number 10 through 12, it talks about what men are going to say about us. It doesn't matter. Let them say. <clears throat> Just let them say on. The verbal is going to be there. But no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. And every word that's spoken against us, he's going to bring it down. So we can trust him and have confidence in him. Paul said they in the 30th verse of Philippians, um, in our scripture, Philippians chapter 1, um, Paul said that uh, they persecuted me, but look at the joy I've got. He said, I, I've went through persecution, but, but look at the joy. Even through your persecution, I mean, you can still be that witness. And my fellowship that I have with him is what brings joy to my life. So wh what do you have on the inside? <clears throat> Paul was in prison, but he said, I've got joy. What do you have on the inside? Is it chains? Is that all you're looking at? The chains and, and, and the persecution and, and, and the problems? Let me tell you something. You have something on the inside that the outside world cannot destroy. So stand in that and trust Him in that. And whatever that you're going through, God is bigger than your problem. And He's bigger than your circumstances and your situations. So trust Him in that. And I promise you that you are going to be victorious. I love you and I appreciate you. And um, let me just pray for you right now. And if you're not a Christian... Oh man, your name can be written down in heaven today. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call on him. Call on him. And uh, allow him to, to touch you and to, and to minister to you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. It's a light under our path, a lamp under our feet. And God, I thank you that we have it in our hearts that we might not sin against you, but walk in victory and strength. Now, I pray, God, to everyone that has watched this evening, would you encourage them? God, would you replace that, that um, God, that depression, God, and, and, and that sadness with your joy that is inside? Regardless of what we're facing, we still have that joy that is in us. I pray that, God, you would just cover each and every one of them and surround them with your presence and let your grace be so real to them. This world is not our home. Our citizenship is in heaven, and we await that time that you shall come and receive us and take us from this place that we shall forever be with you in heaven in the presence of our Father. Now, I glorify you today, and I pray bless your people, God, spiritually, physically, financially, in every area of their life. Bless them and touch them, and we'll give you praise always in Christ's name. Amen. So good to be with you. And um, I thank you so much for watching this evening. I pray that God just give you a great evening and that you enjoy his wonderful grace. God bless you.